Hello, this is Jeffy from Cinetech RPCC team. From this video, I will be continue introduce RSM, and we, this video will focus on the details about configuring configuring RSM. There is an installation and configuration guide. Talk a lot of details and each step-by-step -step procedures to configuring RSM. However, this video is to cover the key points and key steps we need to config in the relative components like Core Manager, UCCE, and RSM. And also with some explanations and the common mistakes that people usually make when we configuring the components for RSM. Before we get into the details of configuring, configuring RSM, I would like to recap the RSM architectures from the previous video. RSM is a remote standard monitoring and it is able to monitor agents from anywhere, for example PSTN and from any headset, analog headsets or normal mobile phones. As long as you are able to dial into the RBR, like CVP or IPRBR, then you will be able to monitor the agents you are entitled to. RSM in architecture, one way it is simulating as if 7941 CRB phones to call manager, and the other way it is simulating the supervisor desktop to the UCCE environment. RSM leverage call manager silent monitoring features and invoke this feature by CTI JTAP connections. And with the CM based silent monitoring, RSM will be able to receive the agent and customer stream from the building bridge of the agent IP phone and then pass on this stream to the IPRBR. VAT HTTP streamed voice and then IPRVR or the VRU system pass on this stream to the monitor or the supervisor via the RTP, normal RTP. And that's why, and this is how the RSM works for enabling the supervisor to monitor the agents from anywhere. Before we get into details of configurations, let's touch some RSM internals. RSM actually have two services. One is VLE engine service, the other one is phone sim service. Basically the VLE engine handles requests from the CTLOS and manage the connections with the CTLOS server and also manage the JTAP QBE connections to the core manager CTI. It is set on top of the Tomcat applications, and that's why you need to install Tomcat for the VLE engines. The VLE engines, when SaaS manage interact with CTLOS JTAP with core manager, in the other hand, is also manage the interactions with IPA, IVR, and VRU request. It is also the service that takes the RTB streams from the agent viewing bridge, extra out the data, pass on to the IPRVR as if the prompt in HTTP streaming. So VRE engine is very important in other. The other important service is the phone sim service. These components manage the simulating phones to the call managers. It simulating it is simulating the 7941 phones and simulating the registration to the call manager and interact with the call manager so that their RSM is able to receive the stream from the agent IP phone.
And here is the diagrams um, regarding the internal of the RSM. So we have VLE engine service, and one side is VLE engine leverage the JTAP plugin API to interact with call manager through the JTAP interface, and also it uses CTLOS client library to manage the connections and retrieve information from CTLOS server. And the sim phone SIM service um, we're actually talking to the call manager by the SIP protocols to register the SIP phones to the call managers as well as receiving the RTP stream from the agent phone. Alright, let's get into the details of the calculations for our thing. There are a lot of information detailed by step by step procedures in the RSM configuration guide, but in this video, I'm going to touch the key points when you configuring the RSM and the explanations why we need to do such configurations. Starting from the simulated phones, since RSM is simulating IP phone to the call manager, we will have to create these devices in the, in the call manager so that the RSM is able to register those devices. As you know, for the phone devices in the call manager, they would need a MAC address. And the MAC address for the RSM simulated phones is a dummy MAC address. You will specify the dummy MAC address in the RSM configurations uh, wizard and this is where you specified this is where you will specify the MAC address how the MAC address for the simulated phone looks like for example I specified the simulated phone as this then I will start in creating the first simulated phone in the call manager device configuration page and this is will be the device name of the call manager in the call manager for the simulated phones and also you will need to add the device or you need to add direct number to the simulating phone devices so similarly, you will have a starting direction number. So the first direction number will be configured on the first SIM phone device in the call manager. And you also need to specify the starting line number on the RSM compression wizard. So the starting line number configuration and the starting MAC configuration on RSM would need to match what you configured in the call manager as the first SIM phone device name and the SIM phone device line number. And then if you want to config 20 SIM phones so that you are able to monitor multiple agents by multiple supervisors at the same time, then you will start to incrementing each device the SIM phone device one by one and the line direction number one by one accordingly. When we're configuring SIM phones, as I said previously, you will have, for example, 20 SIM phones for the RSM, and this has become a pool of the SIM phones the RSM will use. However, RSM actually used this pool of SIM phones for two purposes. Normally, the first five, for example, five SIM phones in the pool will be used at, for the supervisor login. Imagine when you're logging from the supervisor desktop, you will log into an instrument or the extension number. So for RSM, 
when simulating the supervisor logging, it would also need the supervisor to log into a certain device with a specified number. Normally, the first five SIM phones and the first five direction number is what we call the locking pool in the SIM phones. And RSM will normally use the first five devices to log in the supervisor into the UCCE environment. The concept of the logging pool just actually means that, uh, how many SIM phones you will tell the RSM to use as a logging pool and it's actually you are telling RSM what devices or how many devices RSM should use when they're logging as if the supervisor desktop still uses the environment. You can configure the number of the SIM phones to be used as a logging pool and the way you specified this is through the RSM compression wizard. For example, in our compression wizard, we specify the first five SIM phones will be belonging to the logging pool and hence RSM only used the first five SIM phone devices for the supervisor login. In the other hand, it means it can only allow maximum five supervisor to log in at the same time. And then we specified we have maximum 10 monitoring phones, which means we only allow maximum 10 monitoring sessions at the same time. So all together, we actually need to create 15 SIM phones in a call manager. As a non-UCCE configuration, when you configuring the login device for the supervisor, you need to associate the IP phone or the SIM phone devices with the PG user so that when the supervisor logging, it is able to log into that device. That means when we have the first five devices in a SIM phone to be used at, for the supervisor logging request, we will actually need to associate those five devices with the PG user. Remember, we only need to associate the logging pool device, SIM phone devices with the PG user. And for the monitoring SIM phone devices, we don't need to associate them with the PG user. And then after we associate the devices with the PG user, we also need to create device target from the I mean, workstations in the UCCE to create a device target for the locking SIM phone devices. So for example, you can have a look at the SIM phones, the first SIM phone devices and how they conflict in the call manager. So we go to the application user and then we will have the PG user and the PG user is only associated with the first five SIM phone devices. Okay, after we finish the SIM phones configurations, creations and associate the first five SIM phones or the logging pool SIM phones with the PG user, we now need to create an application user for RSM in the call manager. Why? Because as we know, RSM use the JTAP interface to control the monitoring phones to start the monitor session to the agent IP phones. 
and also the RSM need to use the CTI JTAP interface to invoke CM-based silent monitoring feature. That's why we have to create the RSM user and give the RSM user the CTI privilege to allow the RSM for the call monitoring and control the monitoring devices to start the monitor session. So let's take a look at the RSM user configurations. The RSM user will have the standard CTI enabled the standard CTI enabled privilege and call monitoring privilege. And also the RSM user will need to associate with the monitoring SIM phone devices. And one common mistake the people will make is they will also associate the logging pool SIM phone devices with the RSM user. However, we must not associate the logging pool SIM phone devices with the RSM user because the logging pool SIM phone devices is only used for the supervisor login. And RSM will only should use the monitoring SIM phone devices to receive the monitoring sessions RTP packets. And that's why it is also noted in the RSM configuration guide that when we associating the SIM phone devices with the RSM user, we associate all the monitoring device except for the login pool device. Once we finish the SIM phone configurations and RSM user configurations, the last step for the pre-installation configuration we need to do is to create a supervisor in the UCCE environment from the admin workstations. And since we the supervisor is logging in to the system via the telephonic user interface, when we're creating the supervisor account in the UCCE environment, we need to make sure we create the password as the numeric number, which is we are creating the PIM for the supervisor for the supervisor to log in. If you create the alpha numeric password for the supervisor logging, practically the supervisor has no way to enter the alpha numeric uh, strings from the telephone keypad. That's why it is important to create the supervisor in the ICM with the numeric password. After we Config all the prerequisites on the UCC and call managers, we are ready to install the RSM. Firstly, we need to download the JTAP plugin from the call manager web page for the RSM to use. To install RSM on the server, you just need to launch the RSM setup.exe from the RSM media or you could actually download the RSM from the cisco.com software download page. The installation itself is straightforward and you can just follow the prompt. After the installation, you will launch the RSM compression manager utility to start to configuring the RSM. The RSM configuration utilities is to config the RSM to integrate with the call manager and the UCC environment. You will specify, for example, the name of the cluster. It is not a name that you have to match with anyone. You just give any cluster name you would like to. It's a trivial name you would like to give to the 
um, call meter cluster for your configuration reference point. And then you provide the number of the logging SIM phones and the number of the monitoring phones. The total number of the logging SIM phones and the monitoring phones will be the total number of the SIM phones you actually created in the call manager. And then you will specify the peripheral ID. This peripheral ID is for the PIM peripheral ID for the call manager connections. You will have an agent PG, which is also the CMPG in the ICN environment, and we need to put down the peripheral ID for the CM PIM in these compression settings. And then we will specify the RSM user we created in the call manager and the password. Also, we specify the starting SIM phone device like address and the starting direction number for the SIM phone devices and the SIP transportation. And then we specify the call manager CTI manager IP address. And the call manager surface IP address. And the SIP port number for the registration of the SIM phones. And this is to specify the CTI OS server site 8. IP address and the port number, and if you have a redundant CTOS server, you will specify this redundant IP address and the port number here. That's actually what you need to config for the RSM. After the installation and configuring, RSM, you will actually see the phone SIM surface and the VLE engine surface is installed on the server and you can start the services from the service panel. You should also notice you should have a Tomcat surface running on the server as well. So because the VLE engine is running on top of Tomcat, that's why you need to have a Tomcat service running on the server. After we install RSM and start the RSM services, the last step we will do is to integrate RSM with the VIU. Use IPIVR as examples. To integrate RSM with VRU, we will have an IPIVR and we need to upload the prompts for the RSM into the IPIVR. We can find the provided prompts for the IPIVR in the RSM server and C drive Cisco RSM installation directory and call flows folder. And within the call flow folders, we have IPRVR, and this is the IPRVR script and the prompt zip files to be used for the IPRVR announcements. To upload these prompt zip files, we would navigate to the IPRVR web page. After we log into the CRS or UC6 IPRVR administration web page, we will go to the prompt management and we will upload the prompts from the button upload zip files. And after the upload, you will actually see a folder for the RSM has been created to contain the prompts we have uploaded from the RSM server. <coughs> and 
and after we upload the prompt we need to create the API via application and the application will actually refer to the sample RSM script provided by the RSM installations and this is the application the supervisor will call in and trigger it. So for example, when we go into the application management in the IPRVR, we will actually create an RSM application and we will refer the RSM application to the RSM script and we just specify where is the RSM which is the IP address for the RSM server and we'll add the trigger for this application and this trigger is actually configured in the call manager as one of the CTI route point so that when the supervisor call to this number call manager will trigger or will pass the call to the IPRVR and the RSM application will be triggered so that the caller will be connected to the IPRVR and interact with IPRVR and log into the supervisor desktop from the telephone user interface and how this is how the caller is able to get to the IPRVR to interact with the RSM. Just a reminder, you can actually find the RSM script from the IPRVR folder and you can actually upload the script through the IPRVR script management and then from the IPRVR application management, you refer the RSM application to the script. You upload it for the RSM application and specify the RSM IP address. So the IPRVR will interact with the RSM through the network to this IP address. So this is how we should config the RSM to integrate with the call manager, UCCE, and IPRVR. To recap, to configure RSM, we need to create the same phone devices in the call manager, and then we need to create the RSM user so that RSM can use this JTAP user to invoke CM based silent monitoring feature. And also we need to create and associate the first five of the locking pool simple devices to the PG user only. And then we associate the monitoring simple devices except the locking pool simple device with the RSM user. And then we will create the CTI route point as a telephony trigger to trigger the RSM application in IPRVR. We will create the RSM application and upload the prompts to the IPRVR. We will also install the JTAP plugin onto the RSM server and install the RSM onto the server. And then we use the configuration manager utility on the RSM to configure the RSM to, for the information about how RSM and where the RSM need to integrate with the call manager, CTI or server, and so on. We also create the supervisor, user, and accounts in the ICM environment and use the numeric PIN number as the RSM supervisor login credentials. So this is all the key points we need to config the RSM and in the following video 
we will focus on the troubleshooting. Thank you very much.